Gangs mark their turf with graffiti, warning rivals to stay out. The groups thrive in parts of the city that are mired in poverty. There are community programs to help young people get out of gangs. In the seaside neighborhood of Venice, one intervention program is called Venice 2000. Claudia Braccio works with youngsters who are on probation after breaking the law. It's generations and generations of, of gangs and their uncles and their fathers. And generational, and that's just what they know. That's all they know. They just know this little block, this little area. The problems often start with petty theft and drug use. Then the criminal acts can escalate. The Venice neighborhood was the scene of a gang war in the 1990s with dozens of shootings. Melvin Hayward Jr. is the program director for Venice 2000. He was a gang member himself. He says youngsters can easily cross the line from mischief into crime. Oftentimes, kids don't understand that they've crossed that line. I didn't understand it. And um, you, you really have to have, I would say, individuals in your peer group who understand that line and are willing to deter you from jumping over that line. And in my case, I didn't have that. Georgia Leap teaches social welfare at the University of California, Los Angeles, and studies gangs. She says gangs offer protection in tough neighborhoods and a sense of belonging. You know, there's a few liabilities. You may not live to see the age of 21. You may wind up incarcerated at some point. But a lot of kids are willing to trade this off for that sense of security, as strange as that sounds, that the gang provides. A project called Homeboy Industries provides job skills for gang members who call themselves homeboys. A Catholic priest, the Reverend Gregory Boyle, founded the inner city business, and he recently welcomed U.S. Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez and Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa to his site. The mayor says with help, these young people can turn their lives around. Uh, young people, uh, when they feel there are no options, when there are no job opportunities, when they don't have the skills uh, to make it, they lose hope. And when you lose hope, what else do you have? Uh, what else do you have? 17-year-old Jose Vasquez's father, uncle, and mother belong to gangs. He was also attracted to life as a gang member. He calls it gangbanging. My family all gangbanged, my friends. So since I was eight years old, well, we just started doing our thing and we got into the hood. And we just started gangbanging ourselves. At Homeboy Industries, Vasquez is trying to distance himself from his gang in South Central Los Angeles. Former gang member Gabriel Enojos has worked for Homeboy Industries for three years. He says it has changed his life. I got an apartment, a car. They helped me get my driver license. I haven't been to the White House, man, Laura Bush. So it's like, you know, they, you know, I'm finally making real money now, you know, the right money, clean money, and it feels great. Los Angeles gangs have spread through immigrant communities to Central America. U.S. and Central American officials recently met in Los Angeles to discuss the international problem. Police have counted 23,000 violent gang crimes in Los Angeles in the past five years, but they say heightened law enforcement is only part of the answer. Those who work with gangs call for more good community programs like Homeboy Industries and Venice 2000 and efforts to help students stay in school. They say a comprehensive approach to the persistent gang problem may finally bring peace to the city's neighborhoods and hope to its youngsters. Mike O'Sullivan, VOA News, Los Angeles.